Chapter 31 to 32. I let out a sigh as I looked out of the window of Hiruzen's, and soon to be my own office at Kanoha that was in the midst of rebuilding. All in all, the damages were rather minor in the end, with the only major damages being the arena and some damage to the hospital, which shouldn't take longer than a week to repair on their own. Getting used to the view, Yuriko-chan. Hiruzen questioned behind me in amusement. I smirked back at the elderly man who was clad in the full Hokage robe and hat. Figure I should while I have the chance, I replied back. Still can't believe this is happening. Hiruzen chuckled in response. I was the same way, as was Minato, he informed as he joined me in viewing the village. Still, it is happening, and in a few minutes too. Sure enough, people weren't really working on repairing the damages today, rather they were gathered for the announcement of my promotion to Hokage and the ceremony that followed. Keep on the stress some more, why don't you? I requested dryly, my sarcasm clear. Hiruzen laughed in amusement as an ANBU entered. Sarutobi-sama, Uchiha-sama, it's time, he informed politely before vanishing again. Shall we? Hiruzen looked to me with a smirk. No time like the present. I sighed out walking out with Hiruzen, heading up to the roof where the entire population could see us, last time I was up here for an official function, was when Minato-sama was being inaugurated. People of Kanoha, Hiruzen called out to the crowd who quieted down at his voice, listening to what he had to say, off to the side I could see Anoki and Mei standing on a nearby roof, watching us intently with their retinue. For many years I have been your leader, through war and through peace. When the Yandame died, I stood up once again to take on the mantle as your leader until the time came for a new shinobi to rise to that occasion, and today, a shinobi has. I could feel the weight of all the eyes upon me as Hiruzen continued to speak. She has proven herself to be a loyal and capable member of Kanaha Gakur, through wars and strife, she not once backed away, nor has she ever shirked her duty, he announced, turned to me and gestured me forward. I present to you, your Godame Hokage, Yuriko Achiha. The crowd erupted into a deafening cheer as I bent down to allow Hiruzen to place the Hokage's hat onto my head as his guard passed on the ceremonial blades to my own. Straightening, I turned to face the crowd, waiting for their cheers to die down a bit before speaking. My fellow villagers, I know I am young, I know the burden I undertake to be a great one, but I give you my oath, that I shall do everything within my power to protect this village, all who dwell within it, and any who stand by our side as our ally. I shouted out, my determination clear as day as I spoke. And let any who wish to see our peace broken, be broken in return in the face of our unity. The crowd erupted into a massive roar again as I stood over them, my eyes being drawn to my family, Naruto Kuen and Sasuke Kuen looking completely flabbergasted at the sight of me with a hat on my head as Rashi held Madoka chan in his arms, smiling proudly up at me alongside Han and my mother who was openly weeping in pride. Seeing a flicker of something in the corner of my eyes, I turned my gaze to the side where a sight of two familiar faces caused my eyes to widen. Though they were translucent, and possibly a trick of the mind, I could have sworn, I had seen both my father, and my brother, smiling at me in pride. But, with a blink of my eyes, they were gone, with nothing standing where they had been. But still. I knew they were proud of me, and, that would be enough for me. I now sat in Hiruzen's, know my seat behind my desk, looking around it with a somewhat amazed look. I had sat on this side before, many times, I commented to the shinobi around me, Hiruzen-sama and Jiraiya-sama, who were looking rather amused by my amazement, along with Tsum and Hayashi, who looked amused, but understanding. But, it suddenly feels very different. It will feel like that while you settle in, Hiruzen-sama assured me, amusement filling his tone. So, what is your first act as Hokage going to be, Godame-sama? I glowered slightly at him for his teasing before sharing a look with my two advisors. There is actually something I have been thinking of, I replied after a moment. Would you mind postponing your retirement as a shinobi for one more mission, Hiruzen-sama? The old man merely hitched an eyebrow at me. And what mission would you like to assign me, Godame-sama? A retrieval mission, of sorts. I said, girding my loins. I want you and Jiraiya-sama to find and bring Tsunade Senju back to the village. Damn, knew this was coming. Jiraiya muttered. I see. Hiruzen-sama mused. Well, considering we are likely the only two people that Tsunade-chan are likely to listen to, it is an excellent choice on your part. If I wish to decline, however, what will you do? If you decline, I'll send Naruto Kuen along with Jiraiya-sama to remind her of her brother. I admitted shamelessly. We cannot afford to have one of the few S-class Kunoichi in Kanoha's history wasting her talents drinking and gambling her life away, Hiruzen-sama. Not now, 
when, in spite of the fact that we had less than a hundred casualties during the Otosuna War, all of the other villages, Kiri and IWA aside, are eyeing us and wondering how much weaker we have become after the fight. I see. Hiruzen Sama sighed. I never wished to press Tsunade Chan, she always gave her heart openly and fully whenever she did so. Losing Dan and Nawaki was a bitter and sore blow for her, one I doubt she has gotten over as of yet. I knew for a fact that she wouldn't have at this point. Still, I would have Tsunade in Kanoha soon, Naruto Kuen was her family as well, and she had spent her entire life moping around and feeling sorry for herself while he worked his ass off trying to impress me, and succeeding quite a lot of the time, not that he knew it. That is why the Yamanaka clan are an indispensable part of Kanoha, thanks to their mind jutsu, their knowledge of human psychology is nigh unsurpassed and their mental counseling sessions are very effective, as I can testify from personal experience. I said firmly. She had been given more than enough time to come to grips with those she lost, now, she has to lay her ghosts to rest before she completely clears out the Senju accounts. Agreed. Hiruzen sama sighed painfully again. Very well. I accept this mission, Godame sama What incentives am I permitted to use to gain her cooperation? If memory serves, back during the second, or was it third, war, she wanted to institute a program to train Mednin. I asked thoughtfully. Mednin were pretty much taught on a master-apprentice basis with a few exceptions, such as at the hospital. Yes, although there was no time or funding to institute it back then, and she left Kanoha very quickly after the third war, the former Sandame nodded. Tell her she'll be given permission to design and implement the program she envisioned, subject to a discussion with me regarding the goals of said project. I said firmly. No way was I going to let her push her stupid, Mednin rules without any other recourse to them. Also, she'll be placed in charge of the hospital, with the goal of improving the skills of the doctors there. Finally, remind her about Naruto Kuen, one of the last remaining family members she has in this world. She will likely react to thought as much as the other two incentives put together. That is the carrot, Godame sama Hayashi cleared his throat delicately before speaking. What about the stick? I let a cold smile grace my face. Just one, small, threat, if she refuses to come back, Tell her I'll be coming to drag her back personally, whether she wants to or not. I'll also be giving you a Horatian Kanai to throw if that happens. Can I ask why you are so determined to have Tsunade back? Jiraiya asked bluntly. And please don't give me any gabble about Naruto or the good name of Kanoha. Orochimaru. I said seriously. Ibiki, Enko, and the rest of the TNI department have been interrogating the four bodyguards that he abandoned. Apparently, there is a former fifth member who is very much stronger than the four of them put together, one Kimimaro Kagaya, last of the Kagaya clan. He was retired from active duty because he has a disease unique to the bloodline limit of the Kagaya clan. But if there's anyone who can get him back in working order, it's Tsunade. And why do you think she would be willing to even consider working with Orochimaru? Some questioned with a concerned look. I mean, the falling out the Sanin had is, no offense Jiraiya-sama, pretty legendary. Because, Orochimaru can give her exactly what she wants with the impure world resurrection, I informed grimly. All he has to do is dangle the promise of bringing her brother and fiancé back, and she would follow him like a lost puppy. Oh, Tsunade-chan. Hiruzen-sama sighed. Damn it. Jiraiya sighed too. He still carried a torch for her after all these years. I had to give him credit for not giving up, despite her hard-headed intransigence and frequent bouts of physical violence towards him. Thank God I trained Sakura out of that habit before she met Tsunade. Time is of the essence, gentlemen, so depart as soon as you have finished all necessary preparations. I kicked them out of their thoughts with a brisk, business-like tone. As she seems determined to live up to her nickname of the legendary sucker, she's probably in a gambling town, such as Tenzaka Gai. Please try not to destroy any famous landmarks if you have to fight either her or Orochimaru, the fire daimyo would never let me hear the end of it. Hiruzen smirked at me as he quirked an eyebrow at me. Oh. You mean like how you and Rashi Kun decided to nearly create an active volcano near the border, he questioned teasingly getting a sigh out of me as I slumped. I'm never going to hear the end of that, I groaned. Get out of here before I decide to throw you on border patrol, I said, smiling at the former Hokage who laughed in response. As you command, Godame sama he shot back with a teasing bow. I rolled my eyes at my advisors, Sung was barely restraining her laughter as Hayashi shook his head with a smirk on his face. I'll send a toad with a status update later on, Jiraiya assured me before pausing. Actually, would it be possible to still bring Naruto along with us? I blinked as I turned to face the large man with a raised eyebrow. 
Why is that? I questioned curiously. I could guess, based on my knowledge of the canon timeline, but I wanted to hear his reasoning myself. Well, while it is true he could help us with Tsunade, that's not the reason I want to bring him with me. I want to make him my apprentice, Jiraiya told me seriously. I leaned back in my new chair with a serious expression. Apprenticeship, I had learned, was a very serious thing in this world, where by doing so, it showed that the teacher believed their student to be their heir, and in some cases, very literally if a notable person, such as a clan leader or similar were to pass without any direct bloodline heirs, their apprentice could very well be considered their heir. Very well, I said after several moments. But, I want you to start teaching him about your spy network, I told him, leaning forward to rest my arms on my new desk. While I have absolute faith in your skills, it always pays to be prepared, just in case. Yeah, I can do that, Jiraiya confirmed, nodding in agreement. I'll let him know about the mission, he quickly leapt out of the open window, heading towards the Uchiha clan building. He's rather excited about having an apprentice, Hiruzen commented in amusement as he moved over to the open window. Haven't seen him move like that in a while. I smirked at Hiruzen a bit in return. I think he is also eager to see Tsunade again, I added before my smirk dropped a bit. Sorry to use you like this. Hiruzen chuckled a bit in response. Don't apologize, honestly, it is the right decision. I have been rather, lenient with Tsunade-chan's actions as of late, he admitted, smiling wryly. Besides, now, I am but a shinobi in the service of my kage, it is my job to follow your orders, like you have mine for so long. I smiled back at him. Thank you, Hiruzen-sama, I replied, letting my shoulders relax. Now, I apparently have a dozen and a half meetings to read me into all the ANBU ops, and other things that will no doubt generate paperwork. Hiruzen laughed in response. Then I shall leave it to you, Godame-sama, he teased with an exaggerated bow. Good luck. Good to see that Sandim sama still has his energy even after all these years, Hayashi commented, watching the former Kage move over the rooftops like a man half his age. I think he's just glad he can escape all the paperwork he had to deal with, Sum commented, looking at the small pile that was already waiting for me. She's not wrong, Aoi commented as he entered with Chika and Gunma. Plus, you've got the meeting with the ANBU commander in 5 minutes, the Jonin commander after that, and your first council meeting as Hokage in 2 hours. I rolled my eyes in response. No rest for the Hokage, huh? I questioned dryly, getting chuckles from the occupants of the room. Right, let's get this started, come on in, bear, I called out for the ANBU commander to start my long string of meetings for the day. Naruto took in a deep breath as he walked through his mental landscape, a large underground labyrinth, one that he had no problem navigating as he moved towards the area the QB's seal was. So, the brat returns, huh? The massive beast commented as Naruto walked up to the massive bars that represented his seal. What is it this time? I wanted to thank you, Naruto replied easily, long since adjusted to both Kurama's presence and attitude. You helped me protect my friends and home, thank you, I appreciate your help. The massive head of the fox-shaped chakra beast shifted as he took in the sight of the blonde Jinchuriki with a curious look. I didn't do it for them, I simply wanted to show Shikaku who was the strongest, I can hardly do that if he kills my host, now can I? Kurama replied dryly. Maybe so, but still, even if it wasn't your intention, the end result was still the same, Naruto countered with a grin. Kurama rolled his eyes in response. I doubt that is your only reason for visiting me, what else did you want, he grumbled out, not quite meeting Naruto's gaze. The genin grinned in response, a sure sign that Kurama was actually happy with being thanked, at least, that's what his past experiences and what Son Goku and Kokuo told him. Well, I was hoping you would be able to lend me your chakra again in the future, so that I can train with it, Naruto requested. I know I could have done a lot better with it than what I did, so, I want to make sure that I don't besmirch your name later on. He could hear the intelligible grumbling of the chakra beast in response to his words, a sign he said the right thing as Kurama turned towards him again. Fine, brat, he relented. But only because if you're going to be representing me, I don't want my name to be dragged through the mud. Got it. Naruto replied easily, saluting the bijou. Thanks again, Kurama. Kurama rolled his eyes again as the mental avatar of his host faded from sight. Damn kid, he grumbled out, secretly pleased with how things were going between the two of them. Maybe the old man was right. Naruto let out a sigh as he came out of his meditative trance that he used to enter his mindscape to find Jiraiya and Hiruzen sitting at the table with Rashi and Madoka. GG. Arrow Senen, he called out cheerfully, 
getting a smile from Hiruzen and a wince form Jiraiya. Damn it Gaki, what did I tell you about calling me that? Jiraiya groused in response. It's way too undignified. But wholly accurate, Hiruzen commented in amusement. This made his former student pout manfully. What's up? Why are you two here? Naruto questioned in confusion, tilting his head at the two. Well, we just got assigned a mission by the new Hokage, Jiraiya commented, grinning as Naruto's eyes became a bit vacant at the reminder of his sister's new position. And, we wanted a bit of backup for it, so she allowed us to bring you along. Naruto's eyes snapped back into focus. Me? Why? He looked at the two of them. Couldn't you get someone like Rashi or even ANBU to help you if you need it? That's not quite the help that we need, Jiraiya said with a shrug. Well, it was more like, I wanted to bring you along, you learned what I had to teach you during your training for the Chunin exams pretty quickly, so. I wanted to make you my apprentice. Naruto blinked in surprise as he stared at the toad Sanin for a moment. Me? He questioned finally. Jiraiya nodded in confirmation. Yup, he replied bluntly. Why? Naruto asked, narrowing his eyes a bit as he thought it over. Mostly because you remind me of myself when I was your age, if a bit more restrained than I was, Jiraiya commented, steadfastly ignoring Hiruzen's commented of, try a lot more. Plus, it's getting time for me to pass on what I know and Kanoha's intel network. Naruto blinked in response to that particular reveal. Why me, he questioned. Especially for something like that? Contrary to popular belief, intelligence gather is primarily an interaction job, you build contacts with people, become their friend, once you're their friend, they are willing to give you information that they hear, and a lot of information can be gleaned just by talking with someone, Jiraiya informed calmly. And the more approachable one is, the easier it is to get the info. Yuriko-chan, for example, Hiruzen butted in with a smile. While those who know her find her easily approachable, those who don't find her to be a very intimidating figure, especially when her reputation is brought in, they would clam up with just her presence alone because of how strong she is perceived to be, which with rumors, is often greater than reality. On the flip side, you have yourself, Jiraiya countered. In contrast to your sister, you are very approachable to the average person, mostly due to your friendly and open nature as a person, whereas Yuriko is a reserved and serious person by contrast. This makes you perfect for the job of maintaining the intel network as you are an easy person to trust. Naruto frowned as he considered it for a moment, his eyes closing in an almost fox-like manner as he threw before his eyes opened up. Alright, I can do that, he assured with a nod. Jiraiya smirked in response as Hiruzen smiled. Well, you better get your gear kid, we're on a timetable for this mission of ours, he informed. We need to head out right away if we want to catch our target. Um, what is the mission anyways? Naruto questioned in confusion. We're retrieving Sunadeheim, Jiraiya informed, his smile melting into a grimace. Your sister decided that it was time for her to return home, Hiruzen replied with a small sigh. So, she decided that the two of us would have the best chance to bringing her back willingly. What if she isn't willing? Naruto asked in concern. Then your sister will deal with it, Jiraiya informed, showing the kunai Yuriko handed to him. Our job is to locate and give the initial offer. If Tsunadeheim gets violent, then Yuriko will deal with her. Naruto nodded before heading to his room to grab his go bag. Good luck with getting her back, Rashi told the pair as he played with Madoka. From what I've heard, she has quite the temper when, even when she's sober. Hiruzen nodded in agreement. She does, but we will be able to convince her to return, he informed calmly. She doesn't really hate Kanoha, she has simply lost her way. Rashi hummed in response, adjusting Madoka's grip on the toy kunai in her hand to the proper way to hold it. Well, good luck all the same, he told the pair as Naruto came into the room carrying his pack. Ready, the blonde informed seriously, getting a nod from the pair as they stood up. See you when I get back, Rashi G. Rashi chuckled as he ruffled Naruto's hair. Keep yourself safe out there kid, your sister would be disappointed if you got hurt, he told him warningly. Naruto grinned up at him. Hey! It's me we're talking about, he boasted confidently. I'll be fine. Rashi smiled at him. Well, better get going then, he said, nodding towards Hiruzen and Jiraiya. See you when you get back, Naruto. Definitely. Naruto nodded before following after the two older shinobi as they left the apartment. I let out a small sigh as I looked around my new office, my briefings finished, and my guard now off duty as I was finishing up for the day. Congratulations, Hokage-sama. 
I barely blinked as the message appeared before me, a small chuckle escaping my lips in response. Thank you, I replied, smiling slightly. How are you doing today? Quite well, thank you. You have changed things quite a bit. Fate changer. One of my eyebrows rose in response to the term of address. Fate changer. I questioned curiously. A most fitting title for yourself and your impact on the world around you. Not only is the Uchiha clan still alive with more than one member, but now highly respected again in Kanahagakure, Hiruzen Sarutobi is still alive, Naruto Uzumaki and Sasuke Uchiha are brothers in all but name, and many more things. There really is no better title for one such as you. I blinked as my status screen popped up on its own, showing two new titles present. Fate Changer, Destiny and Fate hold no meaning to you, no matter what plans higher powers have for you or yours, you will forge your own path, no matter what. Plus 100% to all stats. Go Dame Hokage, the fifth Hokage to take up leadership of the village, your skills and power have been recognized by all who live in the village. Plus 100% reputation with allied shinobi, command of Kanahagakure shinobi, you can 25% of experience given out for missions completed by loyal shinobi, you have repulsed the Odo slash Suna invasion with minimal casualties. 3 million EXP gained you have gained 3 levels. I chuckled in response as I closed the windows. I doubt those are why you are here, I told my friend, smirking at the box, feeling a sense of amusement from it. True, I have a request from you, if you would allow me. Of course, I told them calmly, smiling at the box. Your presence has been noted by, others. Ones who would like to see your actions in other worlds, some for their own entertainment, others for the positive change that you could initiate within them. I am somewhat busy right now. I answered dryly. It would not be until your natural lifespan has been completed, and it would not be, you exactly, it would be a clone of sorts, it would have your memories and abilities, but you would still be within the pure land if you so wish to. My eyebrow rose at their comment. Have you done something like this before? I questioned them. Once or twice, however, the individuals did not work out too well, they ended up losing themselves in their own god complexes and they had to be dealt with. I gave the box a deadpan look. You do realize that I am on Uchiha, right? I commented dryly. We're the poster children for god complexes. No that would be the Atsutsuki clan. I snorted in response. So, this clone of mine, what point would you copy me at? I questioned. Your memories and abilities at the time of your death, you age may vary depending on the other's wish for the time period you are dropped in. I nodded in understanding as I leaned back into my chair in contemplation, I could tell they were looking for my permission to do this. One condition, I replied carefully. And it may be a fairly simple one. Yes? I need help awakening the Rinnegan, I know several possible ways I could do so, but, it would cross several moral boundaries that I don't want to, I had no issue with the ethical boundaries, as I had done worse on Hiruzen's orders, but my moral boundaries would never allow me to experiment with family members. It could be possible to awaken it using some of Naruto Kuen's blood and a sample of Senju blood, but I would like to avoid doing that if possible, no need for people to see me as the second coming of Orochimaru or something. Fair enough, although that method would not be a guarantee, as Black Zetsu has been meddling for a long time. I nodded in agreement. Exactly. I cannot awaken it myself, but I can put you in contact with the one who can. I paused in thought at that. You mean Hagoromo? I questioned, looking at the box with furrowed eyes. Yes, you have contact with a fragment of his power, all that is needed to form the connection to his spirit, the rest, will be up to you to convince him to help you. I let out a small sigh in response. This could be a difficult task, but, I was willing to do it. Alright, I said softly. I will talk to him. That, is one thing I admire about you, Yuriko Uchiha, at no point do you say try, just, you will, I shall form the connection. I let out a small sigh as I leaned back into my chair and closed my eyes, allowing myself to slip into a meditative state. So, you are the one who is caring for the growth of the reincarnation of my sons, the voice was old, but powerful, and resolute. I greet you, Yuriko Uchiha, daughter of Shigure and Genrai Uchiha, reincarnate from another world. I opened my eyes to the sight of a man floating in the air, sitting cross-legged as he looked down at me with a pair of Rinnegan eyes, a third eye bearing the Rinnesharingan embedded into his forehead. I greet you, Hagoromo Atsutsuki, founder of Ninshu, sage of six paths, and father of the Bijou, I replied easily, facing him with my back straight as I met his gaze. You know of me? He nodded slowly, not taking his eyes off of me for a moment. 
Since the moment you took up my, Amenenohoko, I have known of your existence, and I have watched your growth and actions in the world, he commented. Yours is a path steeped in bloodshed. I didn't flinch at the accusation. That is true, I replied easily. There are many things I could say in an attempt to justify my actions, but I think we both know neither of us want to waste our time with that. Hagoromo nodded at me. That is true as well, descendant of Azura, he said. You walk this path of bloodshed, yes, but, not once have you done it for your own gain, even with this gaming power of yours, you entered the battlefield for a singular reason. To protect my family, I finished. Because I know of a pair who can bring an end to the worst of all of this. The reincarnations of Azura and Indra, Hagoromo said with a sigh. And what would you use the Rinnegan for, if you were given it? I paused for a moment, looking at him with hooded eyes. I would stop the revival of Kagaya and ensure that the Black Zetsu is no longer able to interfere with this world, I said after several moments of us staring at each other. So, my mother's revival does draw near, he commented with a long sigh. What is it you saw, in the stories from your home? A close and narrow victory, I answered. They won, yes, but it was a near thing, and there are several ways to stop it. Hagoromo hummed in response as he closed his eyes in thought. And if you succeed in preventing the revival of my mother? He questioned after a few moments. I will continue as I have, laying the groundwork for peace to flourish, I answered honestly. I know those two can bring it forth, and I know they can protect it, I just wish to ensure that the path is there for them. He nodded his head as he opened his eyes. I believe you, he said simply as he held a hand out to me, palm facing me to show a half-moon symbol. Very well, I shall awaken the Rinnegan within you, I hope you find success in your mission. I bowed my head to him as a sign of respect as I could feel my power shift. Thank you, Hagoromo, I replied gratefully as I opened my eyes to the real world and I could see the flow of my yin and yang chakra within me. I allowed the Rinnegan to fade as I stood up and looked out over the village. I will be sure to use this power for the sake of others, I whispered to myself. At the very least, I can do that for your legacy. End chapter. Yuriko's stats name, Yuriko level, 105 EXP, for 021 slash 650 000 age, 23 gender, female title, Godame Hokage, plus 100% reputation with allied shinobi, command of Kanahagakur shinobi, you can 25% of experience given out for missions completed by loyal shinobi, secondary title, god of shinobi, plus 50% to all stats plus 100% reputation with all allied shinobi plus 10% damage with all ninja arts. Skill, aura of absolute command, active, faded title, fate changer, plus 100% to all stats. Stats HP, 20,025 CP, 95,800 STR, 115, 287, INT, 160, 300, DX, 200, 500, VIT, 115, 287, WS, 160, 300, LUK, 50, 125, Rio. 342,761,998 stat points minus 15. New skills. Rinnegan, LVL Max, considered to be the pinnacle of all Dojitsu, it allows the wielder to fully master all five elemental chakras, Yin and Yang chakra and the seven paths which allow you to share vision with beings that you share your chakra with. Each Rinnegan also comes with a unique ability unique to each wielder alone. Yuriko's ability is, Yamatsu Hisame, 8 Hags of the Underworld, a space-slash-time technique that allows Yuriko to call forth up to 8 past versions of herself, either at a point in time she specified or randomized, with each of these past versions being able to act as a different path. There were many things that Hiruzen Sarutobi had missed about the regular shinobi life when he took up the mantle of Hokage, and one of the biggest things was being able to freely travel the land as he pleased, something that most Hokage are unable to do, as the village needed their oversight. You look like you're enjoying yourself, Sensei, Jiraiya commented with an amused grin from next to him, keeping an eye on Naruto behind them as the blonde focused on the water balloon in his hand. Jiraiya Kuen, the last time I left Konoha, it was to visit the fire daimyo to inform him of my second retirement. The time before that, it was to meet Anoki in the land of iron, the now former Hokage reminded him. I haven't had any kind of holiday in over a decade. Give an old man some time to relax and enjoy the scenery in his last mission for the village, hmm? Jiraiya snorted in response. Right, last mission, he chuckled in amusement. I know you sensei, you'll be bored within the week and bugging Yuriko until she sends you off on some kind of mission. Hiruzen huffed in response to his student's accusation. I will do no such thing, he replied in a dignified manner. 
Now I actually have time to work on some of my own personal projects and maybe even find a student who will respect me as is proper. The toad sage barked out a laugh in response. Right, respect you, you mean like how I taught you my transparent escape, jutsu so that you could do some peeping yourself, he questioned tauntingly. Stubborn brat, the former kage scowled at his student good-naturedly before a pop and a splash caught their attention. Got it. Naruto announced, sounding pleased with himself, making Jiraiya look back at him in surprise. Already, the man questioned. It took me at least two weeks to get that part down. Naruto grinned at him as he shook off his wet hand. Nei-san had me working on chakra control exercises since I was entered into the academy, he stated proudly. This is kinda like some of the ones she came up with to help me better my control. Jiraiya blinked as he stared at Naruto, several things clicking into place in his mind. Of course she would start you on it, he sighed in response before looking at his teacher. Neither me nor him taught her how to use it, and yet she managed to reverse engineer the entire thing to teach him, that girl is such a genius it scares me. Hiruzen chuckled in response. Indeed, it is rather amazing her progress, especially when you consider, she didn't exactly have the training most academy students or even Genin have, he commented in amusement. I hope you have the items for the second step of the jutsu. Jiraiya rolled his eyes in response as he pulled a rubber ball out of a seal in his bag and tossed it to Naruto. This step is similar to the first one, but you need to exert enough for to explode the rubber ball, he explained to the blonde who was studying the ball. This one is less about control and more about power, but you still need the multi-axis rotation of the first step to complete it properly. Naruto nodded in consideration as he studied the ball in his hand for a few more moments before he began to channel his chakra through it. Hopefully that will keep him busy for a bit longer this time, Jiraiya sighed as he scratched his scalp. Hiruzen chuckled a bit as they started walking again. He is rather quick on the uptake, is he not? He agreed proudly. You know, if you didn't, I would have been tempted to claim him as my own apprentice. Jiraiya raised an eyebrow at his sensei. Now there's a scary thought, an Uzumaki Jinchuriki being trained by two gods of shinobi, I don't think the world would remain standing, he commented jokingly, drawing a laugh from his teacher. Indeed, but, I think I know of another who could benefit from my training, perhaps a little more than Naruto-kun would, the former Kage stated contemplatively. You mean that Sasuke kid, right? Jiraiya grunted out in thought, drawing a nod from Hiruzen. He is a cunning little bastard like you are, that's for sure. That he is, Hiruzen confirmed with a nod. It should be interesting to see their development, because if I know Tsunade-chan, I know their teammate will catch her eye for certain. Perfect control, an uncanny knack for medical technique, an eidetic memory, yeah, she's a shoe in for Tsunade's dream apprentice, Jiraiya nodded in agreement, glancing over his shoulder as he heard a popping sound to see Naruto grimacing at the deflated ball in his hand and tossed him a new one. Damn, Yuriko's really got an eye for talent. Hiruzen nodded in agreement. That she does, she'll do well in the seat, despite her misgivings about taking up the mantle, he sighed in contentment. While Tsunade-chan would do a fine job when she got her act together, Yuriko-chan is the best choice for the hat by far, at least, until a certain someone is ready, he murmured, glancing back at the focused Naruto. Jiraiya grinned in response. On that, there is no doubt whatsoever, he agreed easily, making the two older shinobi laugh with each other in amusement. There is a problem with your plan, leader Sama, Zetsu announced as he rose from the ground near the rinnegan bearing body of Yahiko. What is it, Zetsu, the deva path questioned, turning to look at the two-toned plant man. The Kyubi Jinchuriki has indeed left the village, but he is accompanied not by his team, but rather, Jiraiya of the Sanin and the third Hokage, Zetsu reported cautiously, knowing that the temperament of Madara's tool to be, unstable at best. This, is not good, the body finally replied after several moments. Had it either been one, or the other, he would have still continued forward with his plan to capture the Kyubi Jinchuriki as soon as he left the village and hold him in aim until it was time to extract the Kyubi, but with Bothoff them, the Toad Sage and the third shinobi god together, the plan wouldn't work, not unless Akatsuki made more overt movements, like bringing more teams in to deal with the pair, but that would destroy any anonymity they had left. Add to that the yet-to-be-confirmed reports of Yuriko Uchiha knowing the Hiration, and that left them in an uncertain position as to the capture of the Kyubi. Tell Conan to stand down, the corpse of Yahiko said, closing his eyes. We shall put off capturing the Kyubi Jinchuriki for now, as it stands he is too well protected to capture without revealing ourselves and our intentions. Yes, Leader Sama, Zetsu replied before melting back into the ground. A smart move, a voice decreed nearby as the being calling themselves Madara appeared from the shadows. 
I just got back from looking into it, and it turns out, she did learn the Hiration, he explained with a sigh. And on top of that, she has claimed the title of, God of Shinobi, for herself. The Rinnegan bearing corpse paused as it turned to face the masked man. She has, he questioned, a mix of apprehension and rage filling his voice, it wasn't the first time someone made a play for the title since Hiruzen Sarutobi's claim, but they each fell rather quickly and were killed, the only one who possibly came close was Hanzo the Salamander, but even he fell from a mixture of his own paranoia and pain's might. And I doubt there are going to be many challengers to the title, the masked man confirmed. Not once during the invasion did she use the Sharingan or any of its evolutions, even the Hiration was only used for an opening psychological attack. She is the fourth, god of shinobi. Anger rippled through Payne's being as he glared at nothing in particular at the news. Despite his own power, he didn't wish to lay claim to the title of, god of shinobi, but he knew that he was a, god, nonetheless, the fact that what he saw as a lesser being laying claim to the title rankled him fiercely. Then when the time comes to make our move, I shall prove myself to the the true god by slaying this false one, he announced. In two years, when we start our attack, our first target shall be Kanahagakur. The masked man shrugged in response. Fine, do as you wish, he commented, knowing there was no way to talk him out of it as the space around him began to twist. Just to come crawling back to me when you lay broken and bleeding on the ground. It had been a bad week for Tsunade Senju, not that she's had any good ones since leaving Kanoha behind her, having to deal with debt collectors, Yakuza wishing to exploit her and the odd shinobi hoping to claim her bounty made sure of that. But this week had been something special, with her losing almost everything with only Shizen's quick action of plying her medical skills to some influential people keeping them out of the red for traveling funds and having to dodge some rather persistent collectors that she just couldn't smash without drawing the ire of the local peacekeepers and guards, even if she was the famed, medical princess. Although she has heard less and less people calling her that since the Kirigakyu rebellion came to a close with some even saying some other person surpassed her, not that she cared about it, not that she really cared about anything since the death of both her brother, Nawaki, and her lover, Dan. Which led to now, sitting at a pachinko machine, slotting in coin after coin, trying to feel something other than the soul-crushing sadness that chased after her every step that only the ever-present sake at her side helped keep at bay. She was so lost in her own woes that she barely even registered with the flashing lights and cheery sounds that announced a grand prize winner, nor the excited sounds of Shizen next to her, holding their pet pig Taunton excitedly shouting out about clearing their debt away. She lifted her sake jug to her lips to take a drink only to find it empty. Come, Shizen, she announced. We're going to the bar. Eh. Ha. Huh. Wait, Tsunade-sama. Shizen requested panically as she quickly collected their winnings and quickly caught up with her mentor, not that she taught much anymore, not like she had when they started out. When they had started their journey, Tsunade had said it would only be for a few years, some time away from the memories, only. Just one more year, kept coming out, and Tsunade's instructions had dropped slowly as she withdrew more and more into the bottle until, they just stopped with Shizen having to attempt to develop her own skills on her own. And unlike Tsunade, she paid attention to the rumors. At first they started off as an Uchiha who was being compared to Tsunade in terms of medical skills, an up and coming, but, from there, things began to change, from her being almost as good as Tsunade, to some wondering she was better, and now, when people talked about medical ninja, it was Yuriko Uchiha who was touted as the best, not Tsunade. Not that Shizen could blame them, as she followed after her, teachers, had rarely used any of her skills as a kunoichi or mednin save for her special chakra enhanced strength technique and a detoxifying jutsu that purged her body of any alcohol when she needed to be sober, unless she was very much down on her luck and needed to use them to earn some cash in between towns with banks. A small, very small, part of Shizen resented Tsunade for allowing her life to sink so low, but the rest of her knew that her mentor had lost two people that had meant the world to her and had lost her spirit as a result. It couldn't be helped. They walked into the bar, and Shizen, who had her eyes closed as a sigh escaped her lips, was shocked as she bumped into the back of Tsunade who was frozen stiff. Eh. Tsunade-sama. Shizen questioned as she looked around her mentor to see what caused her freeze, only for her eyes to widen in shock at the sight before her in a booth, with two pairs of eyes settling on the pair of them. Well, well, it certainly has been a while, hasn't it? Tsunade-chan, Hiruzen greeted warmly as he shifted slightly in his seat to make some room. Come, sit, let's catch up. Despite his kind voice and welcoming demeanor, it was obvious, it wasn't a suggestion, it was an order. Tsunade jerked slightly before stiffly moving to sit next to her teacher, Jiraiya making room for Shizun next to a blonde genin that the pair hadn't noticed when they first entered. 
He looked at the pair with curious blue eyes as he tilted his head, studying them for a moment before turning back to a scroll in his hand that Shizun noted had a complex seal formula in it. W what are you doing here, sensei? Tsunade managed to get out, slowly recovering from her shock. Shouldn't you be in Kanoha? Hmm, you haven't been keeping up with the news? Hiruzen questioned with a smile as he gave a note to a passing waitress who quickly read it and nodded before bustling off. I am retired now, I passed the hat off to our new godame. Tsunade swallowed tightly, suddenly, her belief of Hokage's dying miserable deaths being challenged by the fact that one retired. And. Why are you here, sensei, she questioned again. I can't check in on my student. Sarutobi questioned in reply as the waitress returned, bearing plates of food for them. Thank you dear, he told the waitress with a smile before she hurried off to her next table. And Tsunade, I must say, I am horribly disappointed, he announced casually as he began to eat, his demeanor changing completely from welcoming to commanding. W what? The medic ninja stammered, her eyes wide as she remained frozen in her seat. I. Be quiet, and listen, Hiruzen said, causing Tsunade's mouth to click shut. When I allowed you the traveling status, so that you may clear your mind, it was not an allowance to ruin yourself and your reputation. I am so disappointed, I was hoping that the rumors I heard about you were just that, rumors, but seeing you now, I can tell that you haven't even Trieto deal with your grief. Despite the fact that she was a ninja in her fifties, despite the fact that she was a proud and independent woman and despite the fact that she considered herself to be very cynical, these words from her sensei cut into Tsunade deeper and more profoundly than she could have imagined possible. Shame rose up in her for what had to be the first time in nearly a decade. It is time for you to come home, Hiruzen continued. The Godame has put an end to your traveling status, something that should have expired years ago. Tsunade swallowed in response. And, what do they want from me, she questioned nervously. She wants you to run the hospital, Hiruzen explained. And she also wants to work with you to develop the medic ninja program that you wanted to introduce during the third war. That got Tsunade's attention as she looked at Hiruzen hopefully. She does, she questioned. Wait, who is the Godain? Yuriko Uchiha, her former teacher told her. She was the only one I could trust to take up the mantle, he informed, giving her a significant look that cut deep into her. Something she's grown to really dislike. Which is kind of ironic, Jiraiya commented, speaking for the first time since they arrived. Since she was originally compared to you when she was starting out, now, they're comparing you to her. Tsunade's eyes snapped over to Jiraiya, her pride stinging in response to that. What do you mean by that? She demanded hotly. The fact that she has surpassed you, Jiraiya countered, meeting her glare evenly. When was the last time you put in any effort in training, Tsunadeheim? I can answer that for you, you haven't. Yuriko, on the other hand, at no point does she not put her whole effort to train herself further. Tsunade recoiled slightly from the accusation, her eyes falling to the blonde genin, seeing another face overlaid over his own, hauntingly familiar face. Come home, Tsunade-chan, Hiruzen prompted gently. The Yamanaka can help you move past your grief, and you can help a new generation learn the skills that can save them and their comrades. Tsunade slumped a bit as she looked away from her teacher. But. She stammered out hesitantly. Tsunade-chan, would they really be happy, seeing you like this? Hiruzen pressed. Come home, let us help you. The slug Sanmin let out a long, shuddering sigh as she nodded. Okay, she relented, getting a smile from Hiruzen and Jiraiya while Shizen mentally cheered. Eat up, Hiruzen prompted gently. We can rest here tonight, and head out tomorrow. Orochimaru-sama, Kabuto greeted as he entered the laboratory of his master. I have found her, but, there is a complication. Orochimaru turned his gaze to Kabuto, his serpentine eyes narrowing as he glared at his assistant. And what, is this, complication, Kabuto, he hissed out angrily. Both Jiraiya and Sarutobi were with her, Kabuto countered with no sign of fear. They were on the road that leads to Kanoha, it looks like Tsunade of the Sanmin is out of our reach. A shout of rage filled the chamber as Orochimaru flung a jar of chemicals at a wall, the chemicals eating away at the brickwork as the splashed on it. Again, again they ruin my plans, he hissed out. First sensei, then that woman killing over three quarters of my men, and now this. It has more to do with the fact your reach was longer than your strength, Orochimaru-sama. Kabuto thought as the snake Sanmin fumed. You dismissed Yuriko Uchiha because you bested her with a trick, and look where it got you? I wonder if this will finally wake you up to the threat she poses or not. Orochimaru paused as a thought seemed to strike him. Maybe, I just need more pawns 
He murmured to himself. Kabuto. I have a job for you. Oh, this will be good, Kabuto sighed mentally as he prepared himself. Mama, look. Madoka-chan called out to me from her little playpen nearby as she held up a picture for me to see. It's family. I smiled at my daughter from my desk as I looked her picture over, it wasn't anything spectacular, just a bunch of different colored stick figures, Sasuke and myself were represented with black crayon while Madoka-chan and Rashi were red, finally with Naruto as a yellow crayon. It looks great, Madoka-chan. I praised her, getting a happy smile and a giggle in response. We'll have to show Papa it when we get home. K. Madoka sang out happily as she went back to her playing, letting me turn back to my paperwork. I had decided to set up a little playpen in the Kage's office so that I could bring Madoka-chan with me occasionally, it was important that she knew I wanted to be with her, but I did tell her that she couldn't interrupt me when I was talking with someone while in the office. A knock on the door, pulled our attention to it as Naruto-kun came strolling in with Jiraiya-sama, Hiruzen-sama, Tsunade, and Shizen-san. We're back, Nei-chan. Naruto called out cheerfully, pulling a smile from me. Welcome back, Naruto-kun, I greeted. Nei-chan. Madoka-chan called out happily, waving at Naruto-kun who went over and began playing with her. I turned back my gaze to the others, smile still on my face. Welcome home, I called out to them. A pleasure to finally meet you, Tsunade-san. Hokage-sama, Tsunade replied stiffly, looking rather uncomfortable. Were there any complications, Hiruzen-sama, Jiraiya-sama? I questioned, looking at the pair. Not really, but, we did catch a glimpse of Kabuto on our way back, Jiraiya reported, getting a scowl from me. After learning he attempted to abduct Madoka-chan during the invasion, I placed him even higher on my to kill list, moving him up to just under Black Zetsu and above Abito. He disengaged pretty quickly so we weren't able to chase him down. I nodded my acceptance. Right, I guess that means Orochimaru knows Tsunade-san is here now, I commented idly before shaking my head of those thoughts. Tsunade-san, I take it they told you what I would like of you? Tsunade jerked her head briefly in a nod. Yeah, taking over the hospital and setting up a medic meme program, right? She questioned tersely. I nodded in confirmation, noting how uncomfortable she seemed to be back in Kanoha. Yes, although, before that happens I would like you to speak with a Yamanaka, I told her firmly. They can help you with your loss, and work through your mental state with you. Need to make sure I'm still loyal, she questioned me bitterly. No, I replied shaking my head as she looked at me in surprise. I believe you are still loyal, you wouldn't have returned if you weren't. I need you at your best, Tsunade-san, that includes mentally and emotionally, and you can't exactly do your job as a doctor with your hemophobia. The Sanmin flinched in response. Tsunade-san, it is normal to be traumatized from your experience, I told her firmly. Just as it is normal to seek help with your trauma, you speaking with the Yamanaka isn't a sign of weakness. It is a sign of strength. Tsunade let out a sigh before nodding. Fine, I'll talk to this head doctor, she relented. Thank you, I replied. Your head doctor, as it were, will be Inoichi Yamanaka, he agreed to take the time to help you with your trauma. Tsunade nodded stiffly in response as I turned my gaze to Shizen-san who stiffened as my gaze landed on her. Hello Shizen-san. As I understand it, you have been learning under Tsunade-san while you were traveling, correct? I questioned the girl who nodded quickly. Yes, I did, Hokage-sama, she replied anxiously. I won't bite, Shizen-san, I told her humorously. I believe you are not a certified shinobi, correct? She nodded quickly, looking a bit ashamed. Would you like to be a shinobi? Shizen blinked in response, her flush of embarrassment vanishing as she looked up at me. Eh? She stammered out for a moment. Oh. Yes, yes I do. I nodded. Alright, please see Aoichi-san in on the second floor, he will evaluate you and send the results to me to assign you a rank. I instructed her as I pulled out a paper and quickly wrote out some instructions on it. Although I do have faith you are at least Chunin level, we must follow procedure on this. Once you are ranked, you will be going to the hospital ahead of Tsunade-san and I would like you to start making notes about things that need improvement to your eyes or things that could be changed. Saya Takamachi will be the one to speak to in the hospital if you have any questions. Thank you, Hokage-sama, Shizen-san said gratefully as I handed her the page. If you'll excuse me. I nodded, allowing her to leave the room to speak with Aoichi-san. I better go and see to the state of the compound, I guess, Tsunade-san said with a small sigh. It shouldn't be too bad, I assigned a team to clean the compound last week, they reported their completion of the task yesterday, I told her. 
Tsunade-san, it is good to have you home. Tsunade blinked in surprise before sighed. Thank you, she replied before leaving the office. Slumping in my seat slightly once the door was closed, I eyed the two smirking men standing to one side and snorted. She isn't going to like my opinions of her rules, is she? She and you are both quite alike in being fairly hard-headed, Hokage-sama. Hiruzen told me. A clash of personalities will be inevitable in this case. Lovely. I deadpanned. Well, at least I can certify that you have indeed completed the mission. Well done, gentlemen. The two chuckled in amusement at that as they relaxed. What is next on the docket then? Jiraiya questioned in amusement. Well, I do have something I would like you to look into, Jiraiya-sama, I told him, getting a raised eyebrow from the San Nin. When you get a chance, can you look into the Nanabai Jinchuriki? I haven't heard anything about her as of late, even though she is a registered shinobi of Takigekyur, and that concerns me. You think it might be the Akatsuki making a move? Jiraiya questioned solemnly. Maybe, I am not certain, hence, why I would like you to look into it, I told him, grimacing a bit. Ha, huh, Karama just said that Chomei is a loner, Naruto-kun commented from where he was playing with Madoka-chan. The Nanabai, that is, he's saying she might just be wanting to be alone. Jiraiya shrugged in response. I got a few friends in Taki that I can reach out to, he said casually. I was planning on making a little tour to check in with my contacts around anyways, so it wouldn't be too far out of that way. My eyebrow rose as his gaze slid over to Naruto-kun. That would be up to him, I told the Toad Sage straightly, getting a chuckle from him and a confused look from Naruto-kun. He wants you to go with him, I clarified for my brother. Oh, um, what about Sasuke and Sakura though, he questioned, grimacing a bit. If I'm not around, they can't take missions, right? Not necessarily, I reassured him. There are a bunch of genin without teams who rotate between them, so they will still be under Kakashi, just with a third team member that rotates out. Plus, I was thinking of talking to Sasuke-kun about an apprenticeship under me if he was interested, Hiruzen-sama commented, getting a surprised look from me, chuckling as he winked at me. And Sakura-chan has been training plenty with Saya-san, I sighed, shaking my head. But, even if you do go with Jiraiya, I would have the three of you take the next Chunin exams in. IWA, yeah IWA is holding them next, together. Naruto-kun hummed in thought as he considered it. I guess, he sighed. How long will we be gone for? A few years at least, Jiraiya informed him. But we won't leave right away, got some stuff to take care of here in Kanoha first before we head out, so, you'll have your chance to say goodbye to everyone and take a few more missions with Kakashi and your team. That put a smile on Naruto-kun's face as he nodded before looking to me. Go ahead, I told him with a chuckle, jerking my head towards the window prompting a smile from him as he leapt out and made his way towards his friends. With Naruto-kun gone, I turned my gaze towards the new notification popped up next to me. Tsunade Senju successfully retrieved. 50,000 EXP gained. Tsunade Senju now resides within Kanahagakur as a loyal shinobi. Plus 100% effectiveness from the hospital potential medical ninja training now available. I dismissed the pop-up and turned to the other two. What do you think Orochimaru is going to do now that he's failed again? I questioned them carefully. The two shared a look and grimace. One of two things, Jiraiya said with a sigh. Either lash out at us in anger, or go to ground and start scheming. I sighed in response as I leaned back. Unfortunately Orochimaru's bases are spread out all over the continent, with no singular location he regularly visited that we were aware of, so taking the fight to him was out of the question. Damn, I grunted in frustration. One possible item we could consider is dealing with the bases we know about in the land of rice paddies, I suppose, but it's doubtful that they're anything more than traps. Hiruzen said unhappily. I nodded in agreement. Alright, keep your ear to the ground then, I told Jiraiya. He may be looking for more allies after all of his losses here, I paused for a moment in thought. Land of rice paddies, isn't that where the Fuma clan lives? The chakra thread specialists? Jiraiya nodded in confirmation. They are, you think he might be looking to recruit them, he questioned. Possibly, but if what you told me before was correct his current body also should be reaching its limit, correct? I suggested. That is true, I'll take a look into it when we leave, Jiraiya confirmed with a nod. I'll send a squad of ANBU to support you for this mission, I told him, meeting his gaze firmly. If they need it, offer them sanctuary here in Kanoha. Jiraiya nodded again in confirmation. Will do, he said confidently. Anything else? 
I shook my head in response. No, not at this time, I told him, sighing as I leaned back into my chair and sent a playful glare to Hiruzen-sama. I'm still upset with you shoving this job into my lap. Hiruzen-sama laughed in amusement to my statement as he relaxed on a couch. Oh don't worry Yuriko-chan, you're still in the easy part of the job, he teased me getting a grumble out of me as I looked at the papers I had to deal with. Screw it, I sighed and formed a shadow clone to start working on them as I played with Madoka-chan, remaining in the room, because even if the clone could do everything I could, it still wasn't me. Tsunade sighed as she looked out of the window of the sitting room of the main building inside of the Senja compound, a small saucer of sake in her hand. I still can't believe that I'm home, she murmured more to herself, than to Shizun who was sitting next to her, writing into a notebook. Even if it wasn't spoken directly to her assistant, the girl still heard her clearly. I will be honest Tsunade-sama, I am glad to be home, the dark-haired medic told her. And, even if you don't see it yet, Tsunade-sama, it will be good for you to be here. Tsunade turned to look at her student with a raised eyebrow. And why is that, all that is here is painful memories and death, she muttered out bitterly. True, they are here, but, there is also good memories, I remember some of the stories you used to tell me of Jiraiya-sama and Orochimaru when you three were still a team under Sarutobi-sama, she's encountered. Plus, with you here and if you teach more future medical ninja, then there will be less people dying as a result. Tsunade lowered her head a bit in response. Who knows, she muttered out finally, taking a sip of her sake, glancing at Shizun from the corner of her eye. How did your test go? Shizun smiled brightly in response. Hokage-sama told me that with my results I was to be inducted as a special jonin, she explained. She wants me to go on a few missions and gain some experience before she fully promotes me to jonin. She did, huh? Tsunade commented, glaring at the cup in her hand. Tsunade-sama, is there something wrong? Shizun questioned nervously. Nothing, the Sanin replied, knocking the sake back. I'm going to bed. Eh. Oh, good night then, Tsunade-sama, Shizun called out after her. Shizun sighed as she looked down at Tantan next to her. I really hope Inoichi-sama can help her, she admitted to the pig who oinked at her in response, butting up against her comfortingly. I want the Tsunade-sama that I remember back, not the drunk that's driving her body. Unknown to the black-haired Kunoichi, Tsunade was paused outside of the door to the room, a frown on her face as she heard Shizun's admission before silently stepping away towards her room. Shizun. She murmured out as she walked. End chapter. Yuriko's stats name, Yuriko level, 105 EXP, 96, 582, slash 650, 000 age, 23 gender, female title, Godame Hokage, plus 100% reputation with allied shinobi, command of Kanahagakure shinobi, you can 25% of experience given out for missions completed by loyal shinobi, secondary title, god of shinobi, plus 50% to all stats plus 100% reputation with all allied shinobi plus 10% damage with all ninja arts. Skill, aura of absolute command, active, faded title, fate changer, plus 100% to all stats. Stats HP, 20,025 CP, 95,800 STR, 120, 300, INT, 160, 400, DX, 200, 500, VIT, 120, 300, WS, 160, 400, LUK, 55, 137, Rio, 342,761,998. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye bye.